Welcome to Instruments Direct, and on today's tech review, we take a look at the good old PT878 portable ultrasonic flow meter and the brand new Bluetooth PT900 ultrasonic flow meter. Check it out. Welcome to Instruments Direct. Today's tech review is on the GE Panametrix Transport PT900 new ultrasonic flow meter. Now this tech review is Instruments Direct's observation based upon our testing over the past 40 years uh, and experience with ultrasonic flow meter technology. It's our hope that this information will enhance your knowledge and understanding of ultrasonic flow meter technology and application. So by now, if you're looking at this video, you probably know how an ultrasonic transit time flow meter works, but for the newbies out there, basically a ultrasonic transit time flow meter is designed to work on clean liquids primarily, say ultra pure up to oh, say a couple percent uh, suspended solids there. So water and surge is great, but sludge is not so great. And the way that this works, we basically measure the time it takes to get from one transducer to another. Uh, so the example on the right hand side here will send a sound burst from this sensor across the pipe to the other sensor and measure how long it took to get from the first sensor to the second sensor. And we'll then at the same time send a sound burst from the sensor back to the first sensor. But because the flow is going against the sound, it takes a longer period of time for it to transit to the first transducer. So the faster the flow rate, the greater the differential. And there's different configurations there. This is a single path configuration, and this is a dual path or a V-type configuration, and this is sometimes called the Z configuration. So this is the theory of operation and using ultrasonic transit time flow meter technology. So the reason we are here today is to take a quick look at the PT900, and the people that are most interested in the PT900 are the people who use the PT800. So in brief, uh, the PT900 has the same performance as the PT878, but features a total redesign of how the transmitter, the clamping fixture, and the user interface uh, in order to improve the user experience. As you can see, it's a portable, simple to use device, uh, very simple uh, and very similar to the current PT878 design. We'll learn more as we go through this tech review. Of course, the main reason to do something like this is buckaroos right now. The PT878 costs less than the PT900. Uh, and then maybe the prices will drop later on there. But the PT900 is now out at this point in time. will eventually replace the PT878. What's the big difference? Well, we lose the handheld PT878 metering device and substitute that with a handheld tablet uh, and in this case there, uh, an Android-based tablet technology is the big difference there. So the, the basic theory of operation is the same, but we've replaced the handheld device uh, with a tablet using Bluetooth communications. Look, Ma, no wires. So let's unbox this beast. You have the choice of getting a harder soft case, and quite frankly, if you look at it, when it comes in, the case, the soft case, at least the one we have in our shop here, looks the same as the other case there. So the breakdown of everything you could possibly get is pictured here. Uh, so, of course, we have the case. Uh, you get a set of transducers, which are slightly different from the old design. You get a new clamping fixture, which is a little bit different, but you can use it with the new design and the old stuff. Transducer cables, which are different, but there are adapters. The transmitter is this box over here. It's got no buttons or whistles or displays on it. It's just a blind box there. Uh, the tablet is an option. Uh, and right now it's Android, and then someday in the near future it'll be for the iPhone technology. Uh, and it stores all the data on an SD card. Hallelujah, no more data logger. Uh, the old data logger for the PT878 and the communications was... Tiring, how's that? That's a good word. Uh, and only had 100,000 data points. So big, big difference on the 
the data logger side of the coin there and very easy access to collecting the data. We've got a power supply, uh, the tape, the couplet, uh, and so on, and all the other features are usable with it, uh, and the, uh, the temperature energy kit you can get there as an option, IO cable you can get there as an option. Uh, big change in the thickness gauge. The thickness gauge is no longer a plug-in sensor. It is a very expensive, optional, handheld sensor. So you can look at that as a choice there, but it's pretty expensive. There are many other choices you could use if you're going to go to a handheld sensor. So moving forward here. Clamp. The clamp is different, uh, functionally exactly the same. And you can see the big difference is this cantilever arrangement here that you could basically put the sensor in there and push the cantilever down and that will compress the sensor onto the pipe. The same, uh, but a little bit different design, block and tackle basically with the chain going around the pipe there. Uh, this has an extender there because the new transducers have a shorter profile, uh, uh, the shorter versions of the 401, 402. We'll look at that in a moment there, but you can, uh, use the standard uh, transducers along with this new uh, uh, track slash rail mounting clamp assembly. Uh, and here's a better picture of the device itself there. So uh, the new transducer, it's a lower profile and it has a little holder we put on the top. We slide it under the cantilever and close it down there. Uh, if you were to use your existing 401, 402 transducer, you wouldn't use this uh, transducer holder there. So. It's multifaceted for the old and the new. And that's probably as you're walking through this whole thing, what am I going to do with my drawer of transducers that I have over the last two decades there? So uh, fear not, there's some way to work that out. So here's the new set of transducers. The half megahertz is the CRR591. Uh, and the traditional workhorse, the one megahertz, is the dash 592. And physically, they look the same, but there's two significant differences. Is the profile is shorter, so they made them shorter. That's why this little uh, spacer is on here to put in the mount there. And this connector. Mm. This connector is a new connector, and we'll look at that in a minute. Well, here we're going to look at it right now. This new connector is a different thread, so it's basically called a T and C. Uh, so with the new signal strength or new signals cables it would go from this transducer uh, back to the PT900 as a different cable than you're currently using. And there is an adapter that you can buy to uh, change uh, this to a B and C connection if you wanted to use the other type of cables there. So here we go uh, with the transmitter itself. As we said, there's really no switches on the device there. It's a big block. Uh, it is available as a single channel and as a dual channel. So we haven't seen that in a very long time. Uh, it is a Bluetooth wireless communication uh, between this device and your tablet. Uh, so you do not need to leave the tablet in the field. You use the tablet to program it and set it up uh, and then retrieve information as you want to. Uh, it stores all the data on an SD card. Uh, and the way that you can get to communicate with this device uh, is to download the app, uh, the PT900 app software, uh, and it's called Transport PT900. Download that to your, your Android tablet, and then you can communicate with it. So don't worry about it. This is not uh, a scary thing to do. Uh, it's just like operating the PT878 uh, with cute pictures on it. So basically to program the device is just like it was before. You're going to select the pipe information. You're going to select the type of fluid. You're going to select the type of transducers. And see the picture on the right, the type of transducers that you have on here. You're going to select the placement. So nothing unique. Uh, the app is very intuitive, and you don't really need to read the manual on how to do that. Uh, and one key thing is it actually has the ability to do multi-point calibrations. Uh, so should we have uh, annual calibrations instead of the single point plus or minus a percent there, now we can do a multi-point calibration. So the, the bottom line is the PT900 can be more accurate than the PT878. So there's an advantage 
and the newer level of technology. And as I said before, as we program the whole device, we'll actually uh, kick out the spacing. Uh, again, this, you see this in millimeters there, but you can program it to do it in English and metric and so on. Uh, and then as you can see, uh, it, it calls out the spacing. And then the picture on the right hand side there, here's a picture of when you wanted to run with a two channel application. So you basically can read the, the flow and all the different diagnostics. You can pull them up on the screen. It's a GUI interface. So you can pull up all the different parameters should you want to see that uh, on one and if you buy the optional two channel device. Uh, the data logging is, as I said, big time different as opposed to PT878 that only stored 100,000 data points and was not fun retrieving data. Uh, so this device there has a uh, uh, eight gigabyte storage uh, SD card in there uh, and you can, it stores it as a CSV format. Uh, so you can download it uh, with a cable. Uh, it's the quickest way to do that. And then open up Excel uh, and open up your CSV file. So the nightmare of logging is over. So especially when you have an application, when you're monitoring flow and you're monitoring energy, temperature one, temperature two, uh, you'll have all the data storage you possibly could want. And you can actually get it out of the meter this time. So big step up from the PT878. Um, the specifications of the PT878, as you can see, the hardware kit basically is going to get a set of transducers, and they came with the same configurations as the PT878. So you can get the small pipe, the half to uh, uh, two inches, uh, the two inches, one megahertz, and then the uh, the half megahertz and up. Uh, so. Uh, same format uh, as the PT878. Uh, the big question added is, as I said before, can I use my PT878 hardware? Can I use everything? Well, of course, the PT878 handheld device, you can take that out of the equation. Uh, you can use the transducers, are compatible with adapters uh, or your old signal cable. Uh, and uh, so you can use the old transducers there. Again, repeating, you can use them with the adapters or your old cables with the new PT900 because it's still just a LIMO interface on the PT900 itself. Uh, and right now, as of this recording, uh, they're communicating directly with Android tablets uh, and uh, some people having promos to provide the tablets free. I don't know how long that's going to last, but you can go out and buy your own tablet there. You don't have to get it uh, from a GE uh, or with the PT900. Uh, and then in the future, they'll have other choices of communication. So bottom line, PT900 is one step up from the PT878. and does everything the PT878 did before and a little better. Uh, and uh, so... Uh, our tech review indicated the accuracies in our flow laboratory were equal or better than the PT878 from a performance point of view. So, if you are a PT878 lover, uh, when it comes time to upgrade your equipment, time to flip over to the PT900. Uh, you can use the new transducer hardware or you can supplement it with your old transducer hardware. So Insmith Direct is a provider, of course, of ultrasonic flow meters, all different sizes and shapes and uh, brands and models. And so that's what we do here. Uh, should you have any other questions about ultrasonic flow meters, you can go to the website at www.instrumentsdirect.com and learn more about the PT900 ultrasonic flow meter. Should you have any additional questions, feel free to give us a call on the numbers up in the screen or drop us an email. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program. Should you have any questions, check out the show notes and links listed below. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Right next to the subscription button, you'll find a little bell. You click on the bell and you will get notified when we upload new videos. So until next time, we'll see you later.